Okay, the use case we're going to show is how we can um, build a build a container image and change a change a template. So the process is going to start from a Docker file. We're going to create the image. We're going to publish the image, or what they say, push the image to the container registry. We're going to make a change in the Terraform template to point to the new tag of that image, and then we're going to rebuild the workspace. So what you're looking at on my screen here is just to get you all on the same page. Um, some of this is local. This is my local terminal on the left. I have my repo of all my all my templates. So you'll see I have one here called pod-idea. So this is a JetBrains-based workspace. This is the actual workspace based on that same template running on the right side. You'll notice there's no JetBrains icon because it's going to use JetBrains Gateway as a way to connect. Um, so the kind of the flow I want to change, let me dig into the template real quick. <clears throat> if I go into the Terraform file, you'll notice under the image var <clears throat> that it's using, this is the name of the of the of the container image. And the tag is using the the release of IntelliJ 2022.3.2. Um, maybe the use cases here is we just tried out this new version of IntelliJ. <clears throat> it's caused problems, so we're going to create a new image tag of the previous version. So I'm going to build a new image tag based on the previous version, which is 2022.1.4. So with that in mind, let's um, start with the Docker file. So what you're looking at here is this is code server running. Um, I'm using a Docker based workspace to do all my Docker building in the cloud. It's this one here called Docker Builds. And I pulled up the Docker file. And you'll notice that part of this Docker file, um, it's going to first use the parent uh, image that I already developed somewhere else that has the Java version in there. So this is the enterprise-java. So this has Java version like 11. So that's what's cool about Docker is you can nest these. So you can create one base image and then create other images based on that. I'm going to change the user to root, <clears throat> which you have to do if you're going to be installing anything into the image. You, you can't do it as the coder user who doesn't have rights. And then this one command is going to install, install the JetBrains IDE. And you'll notice this is, the, this is the last time I ran this. It has 2022.3.2. What I want to do is change this to 2022.1.4. So I'm going to point it to a different version on the JetBrains website and download that version of JetBrains. Uh, of that JetBrains IDE. I'm going to save it. Um, the last step of any proper Docker file is you change the user back to the local user called Coder because you don't want the workspace to start with the users logged in as root because root, you have access to more things that you could change. On the bottom screen, this is still in the cloud. I'm going to go into that directory for that Docker file. I think I'm in there already. And I'll go into the uh, into the IntelliJ dot IDAE folder within that this is an ultimate folder that's the version of of IntelliJ and you'll see the same thing Docker file right there I'm going to run the Docker build command to basically build to rebuild this image using the version that I want so um, this is the name of my repo that's going to be on Docker Hub it's my name Mark T Mark T Milligan and I just want to verify I use the right naming here so I'm going to go back into this workspace and verify it's going to be this and <clears throat> the tag number will be the new version of the IDE which is 2002.1.4 and then the period space period just says use the docker file that's in this current directory to read through the steps and build it so we press enter here you'll see it start to build the image <clears throat> Um, this may take 20 seconds, 30 seconds, but um, what it's doing here and what's cool about Docker is that on my um, on my workspace, if I happen to have brought this image down before or any portion of this image, like even the Java parent image, if it found it, it wouldn't bring it down off the internet again. It would just use the local cache. In this case, I just started this workspace for the first time, so there is no image caching going on, so it's going to have to rebuild everything from the ground up, but that's okay. So you'll see what it's doing right now is it's pulling down that Java image and it's taking 36 seconds. It just finished that. Now it's running each of those commands. So right now it's doing the run make command. Now it's bringing down the JetBrains IDE. You should see words like JetBrains and IntelliJ. 
So you'll see like this step right here mirrors the step above. It's just kind of going through each of the steps that are in that Docker file and it's going to run them. Um, so it's bringing down one dot or sorry, 2022.1.4. And once it's finished, it'll show me my prompt. Let's see how long this takes. I'm going to hit pause while this gets done. Hold on, pause, record. <clears throat> so you see it took 63 seconds to build the latest version of IntelliJ and download it, and it's done. Okay, now that we've built the image, so this image is now sitting inside of my Coder Docker Builds workspace. We need to push it to Docker Hub, which is a, which is a container registry, and then we'll reference that inside of my template. So we'll do Docker push, and I need to make sure it's the matching name, which is this. And this is 1.4. So we change the tag name. And this is just a matter of doing a upload. It's got to upload a 3.2 gig file. I use Google Fiber. So this should take only 30 or so seconds. I'll go on pause while this is going on. OK, so you'll see that the uh, that this new container image was pushed to Docker Hub. You see all the various steps. And I can even verify that. I have Docker Hub pulled up on the right side of the screen. I'll um, click into that repo. And you'll notice there's now a second tag. And it was just created. See that a few seconds ago? So here was the old one, version 3.2. And I want to change my template now to use 1.4. So how do we change templates? We can do it in the UI. I'm kind of an old, old school. I like to change my templates um on my local computer and then upload them so this is local vs code this is the template you'll notice at the very top <clears throat> there's this image line and i'm going to keep the old one and just comment it out so let's put a comment in front of the image variable and change this one to 4.1 and then down in my template where this image is referenced is under the kubernetes pod spec you'll see as I'm building the container based on local image. So this one line change is gonna change every user to now use uh, JetBrains IntelliJ 2002 4.1 from 3. Dot, or sorry, it's 1.4, I'm sorry about that. I got just do one verification step. If I, this is not correct, I really missed this. Uh, yeah, 1.4 was correct, good, so we're good. So we saved this, we're gonna push this now to our, um, uh, to our workspace. So to do that, I'm going to hit pause for one second and copy my SSH key over. I don't want you all to see this. So give me one second. And we want to... Okay, reshare my screen. Okay, so I've now logged into my CLI. I did do coder list. You'll see the names of my workspaces. <clears throat> the one we're going to be pushing is this template called pod IDIA. I'm in the directory, so I do coder templates push dash Y, and it's going to now update that new template into my coder deployment. Once this is done, if I click on the workspaces screen, you should see a little update tick over the workspace. There it is. See, outdated. We're going to go in there, click update. Well, this is doing that. I'm going to um, try to think of a way to show this. I don't really want to launch Gateway this moment, but um, but this is basically forcing the the. This is changing the container image that this workspace is based on. So it'll use this new version of this JetBrains IDE. Um, maybe I can round it out by pulling up um, JetBrains Gateway. We'll log in. You should see the IntelliJ workspace. It says it's currently starting. We're gonna wait for it to finish. Okay, so the workspace is rebuilt with the new container image with the new release of JetBrains IntelliJ. 
This is JetBrains Gateway, which is how you run a JetBrains IDE remotely. I'll click Select IDE and Project. <clears throat> okay, and you'll notice it found version 2022.1.4 on that on my workspace running on the right, and I'm going to launch the IDE. And it's pulled up JetBrains IntelliJ. And as I already proved with the, with the other button, if I go to the help icon and uh, do the, one of these should show the version of IntelliJ, but this is now running a different version of IntelliJ. Hope this helps.